What shall we talk about this morning? No questions, no. What does meditation mean in daily life? Is that the question, sir? What is personality? I really don't know. Oh, see. Alexi. No, je. Dites un peu plus haut, je vous en prie. Parlez un peu. Pas en l'air, mais. I don't quite understand, sir. Je n'ai pas tout à fait compris parce que je ne je ne vous entends pas très bien. Je passe par une période. Un peu plus. Je passe par une période où je suis vraiment régulé par ce que je vois, vous voyez. C'est-à-dire que je vois des tas de choses, vous voyez, qui me font terriblement mal, vous voyez. Et en même temps, je sais qu'il faut passer par là, vous voyez, qu'il faut souffrir. Disons, vous voyez, je, je suis dans un cadre, par exemple, je, je vois quelque chose qui est nestéréfissime, vous voyez. Je, je sors de la conférence, vous voyez, et je vois un peu juste après des gens qui fument une cigarette, ou qui sont dans un bar, ou qui font des tas de choses qui font vraiment la contradiction avec ce qu'on fait ici, vous voyez. Mais je la sors, vous voyez, je ne peux pas. Je peux pas le, Je ne vois pas. <laughs> I understand. I think as far as I can make out the questioner is asking something as I'm walking along, something happens in me. And that moves me very much. And gradually that disappears. Again it comes. Ça va, c'est ça? Plus ou moins. Bien. Oui. Il est plus blessé par ce qu'il voit par ce qu'il voit par ce qu'il voit. Yeah, that's it. He he sees there is suffering and he goes through it. No, he sees contradiction. He said when he saw someone smoking as soon as you leave the tent or something, he feels the contradiction between what you have been said, what has been being said, and what is actually taking place outside. He's hurt, shocked. Suffers when he sees what actually is going on around him outside, and this contradiction, what is said here, and what is actually going on outside. What is one to do, sir? Voilà. Any other question? Come on. How can consciousness be conscious of itself properly? How can consciousness be aware of itself? Consciousness be conscious. Huh? Yes, sir. How can consciousness be aware of itself? I was going to talk about that a little bit this morning, if you want. So, 
that these questions anymore. One, what place has meditation in daily life? One sees the world in such contradiction. What is going on around us is so there is so much suffering and so on, and it is quite the opposite of what is, what is being said here. What is one to do? Why man is afraid of the truth? Huh? Why, man is Why is man afraid of truth? Could you talk about the energy that heals? Now, uh, I received initiation by Guru Maharaj, but my problem, I can't, I cannot surrender totally. Is it possible to get liberation without surrender? That's, that is not all my question. First part of the question I understood, sir, but the second part I don't quite follow. He has been initiated. Please don't laugh at us. He has been initiated into something which Guru Maharajji, that is that boy, did, has initiated him. And though he has lived with it, he is not liberated. Come on. He is unable to surrender. All right, let's now wait a minute, that's enough. What is meditation in daily life? Why is man frightened of truth? Can consciousness be aware of itself? And why is it, being in the, when we are here together in the tent, and when we go out we see such contradiction, and that makes one anxious, suffer. And also the last question, which is being initiated by somebody, and he is unable to surrender himself to what he thinks he should surrender to. That's what the gentleman says. Now which of these questions would you like to go into? Can be Would you like to talk over together the question which that gentleman raised? Can consciousness be aware of itself? Would you like to go into that? That is, can thought, we'll begin slowly, go into it slowly, can thought be aware of itself, that is, can thinking be aware of the, the root of its thought, the movement of thinking, and all the process of thought? Can that movement be aware of itself? So that is the question that was raised, not only by that gentleman, it was also raised by somebody over there yesterday morning. Can, can the same question, can the mind, with all its content, which is never still, which is always active, moving, can that 
Can that movement be aware of itself? Why do you want to know? Why do you want to know such a problem? You just... I want to find out. When you put that question, what, what, why are you putting it? Because if you are serious about the matter, it's one of the most it demands a great deal of attention to find out whether thought, the thinking, can be aware of its own movement. Either you have put it out of curiosity, just some question to ask, or you are asking that question to eliminate totally the division between the thinker and the thought. Do you understand me? Perhaps we will go into this when we also consider what place has meditation in daily life. And can you surrender yourself to somebody? That's what that gentleman asked. Can we dispose of that first question, the last question? That is, somebody with some, you know, all the rest of it, these gurus, they come and say, surrender. Surrender yourself to me. I know you don't, but give yourself over to me and I will help you. Give over your property, your money, your everything, and you won't have any money problem after that. You follow? I mean, this is, this is the actual fact that's going on in the world. We are so terribly gullible. The same pattern has been repeated by the, by the churches all over the world. Surrender yourself to God, to Christ, to this, give over everything that we have, we look after you, join... And oh, they promised this. And at the end, where are you? No money. I've had the speaker has had many people have come to the speaker with this problem, given over everything they had: houses, property, money. You understand? Left their homes, and then the man is off. The Guru is off in some kind of lovely house and you are stuck. So the first thing is, with regard to that, don't accept any authority. Like there is the authority of a first-class surgeon, but in so-called spiritual matters, matters of the mind and psychology, there is no authority. So nobody can initiate you into something. That's just one of those tricks that human beings play on others. The next question is, what place has meditation in life, in daily life? Or meditation is something separate from daily life. Or you introduce the idea of meditation into daily life. 
You understand my point? There are three problems and more involved in it. That is, you are, medi- you are introducing the idea of meditation, the idea, and to fi- trying to find out what that idea, what place that idea has in daily life. First of all, is it an idea that you must meditate, that you must do this, that you must do that? I come to a conclusion and introduce that concept into daily life. Right? Right, sir? You've asked, you understood that question. Or try to find out what relationship action has with the total awareness of consciousness. I don't know, this may be a little... That is, why should I... why should one meditate at all? We lead our daily life rather unhappily, uh, shoddily, conflict, hmm, misery, suffering, deceived by others, and so on. That's our daily life. Why do you want to introduce meditation into that? Or in the understanding of conflict, sorrow, arrogance, pride, and so on, in the understanding the meaning, the structure of these things, the reactions, that is part of meditation. Not you meditate and then introduce into action, into daily life, but rather during the daily life, when you go to the office, when you go working in a factory, or ploughing a field, or talking to your wife or husband, girl or boy, you are aware of your reactions. And the comprehension of those reactions the understanding, not intellectually, but why you are jealous, why this state of anxiety exists in you, why you accept authority, why you depend on another. In the investigation of those things, that exploration itself is meditation. Not the other way around. The other, if you put it, if you meditate and then introduce that what you think is meditation in daily life, there's conflict. You think this is so, and you are bringing that into action in daily life. So there must be contradiction. Whereas if you, if one is envious, as most of us are, what is the nature of envy? Why are we envious? Not right or wrong, we should not be or should be, why does this envy arise? In inquiring into that, and Freeing through inquiry, greed, envy, that is the movement of meditation. In that there is no conflict, you are inquiring constantly. Right? This is
This demands your attention. This demands your, that you must be serious, not just play with words. So meditation has a place in daily life when there is an inquiry into the whole nature and structure of your being, your reactions, what is the state of your consciousness, why you believe, don't believe, why you are influenced by institutions and so on, so on. All that is, a, is an actual movement of meditation. Right? If one is actually, not theoretically, actually doing it, then you begin to understand the nature of consciousness. Right? Not you are not imposing something on it, according to Freud, according to some psychologist, some guru or somebody or that. You are inquiring into your whole being. That being is your consciousness. So we've come to the, we've answered these questions, come to that point. So let's begin very simply and go into it, if you are willing. I wonder if you have ever inquired into the whole movement of thought, whole activity of thinking, and whether thought, thinking, can see itself in act, moving. You understand my question? Let's be clear that we are, the question is clear. So please, this is rather important if you want to go into it. If you are at all serious in this matter, and it is really very important to comprehend the question first, which is, I can say I am conscious, I, I am aware of my consciousness through my belief, through my fears, through my pleasures, through my sorrow. So the content of my consciousness, one, I can be aware by saying, yes, I am afraid, I am greedy, I suffer, I am arrogant, I am pride, I have pride and so on, which is the content of consciousness of which I am aware. Right? The other the, so there is in that I am different from my consciousness. Right? Does this interest you? I hope so. So there is the me, the observer, observing his consciousness. But the me is greedy, the me is anxious, the me is frightened, the me is full of anxiety, uncertainty, sorrow. So which is my consciousness. So I am not different from my consciousness. Right? Is that clear? I am not different from what I think. 
I am not different from the experiences I have had. And I am not different or di something totally opposite to what my anxiety, fears and all the rest of I am all that. I may think I am God, but the very thinking is part of me, which invents God. You see, I hope you see all that. So, then we come to the question, if the observer is the observed, which is the consciousness, then the question arises, can that consciousness be aware of its own movements? To put it very, very simply, can is there an awareness of the arising of anger? Anger itself so that there is not me different from anger. This is please, you don't mind my going into it a little bit. Are you interested in all this? Let's go into it. One is angry. At the moment of anger, there is no recognition as being angry. Right? Have you noticed? At the second, at the moment of intense anger, there is only that state. Later on, you call it anger. Right? A second later, which means that you have recognized from the past that which has happened in the past and which is happening now, and you say, yes, that's anger. Right? Are oh, you following? So, please follow this. There is anger, at the moment of anger there is no <coughs> recognition and the naming of that reaction. A second later the naming begins. The naming is from the past. The naming is the recognition from the past, the present reaction. So can you not name the present reaction, reaction, but just observe without naming it? The moment you name it, you have recognized it and so strengthen the reaction. I wonder if you are you very interesting. That is the word is not the thing. The, te the word tent, the marquee, is not the actual fact. But we are carried away by the word and not by the fact. So, to real, to comprehend, to see that the word has become tremendously important. And see the fact the word is not the thing. So, when there is anger, which is a reaction to observe it, without naming it, and so that reaction begins to wither away. The moment you name it, you have strengthened it. The strengthening is from the past. So 
If that is clear, we can go to the next step, which is, is it possible for the senses, which is the reaction of the senses, for the senses to be aware of themselves? Not you are aware of the senses, but the senses themselves open. I wonder if I I'll go into it. Don't be. <laughs> I'll sh- if you, if you will kindly not follow what I am saying, but kindly observe in yourself the reactions of the senses. Right. Now, we function. Uh, our senses function separately – seeing, tasting, hearing, smelling and so on. They are all separate. I wonder – you want Now, can you observe – is there a total movement of all the senses together? You have understood something what I am saying? You understand, this is really quite fascinating to find out, because then you will see if you are observing, if there is an observation of a person of a of the the movement of the waters of a sea, or the ma- mountains, birds, anything, or your friend, or your intimate person, if you observe, if there is an observation with all the senses, then there is no centre from which you are observing. You get it? Please do it, do it. Test it out. Don't accept anything I'm the speaker is saying. Test it out for yourself. When you smell something lovely, a perfume of an early morning, when the air is clean. Washed out by the rain, and there is beauty in the land, and so on. Or is one particular sense awake, awake, or you are observing the total delicacy and the beauty of the morning with all your senses? Is that correct? Yes. Yes, sir. What? If I see that I am not different from the total contents of my consciousness yet, then the question as to whether I can be conscious of my own consciousness seems to be rather like asking, can a camera take a photograph of itself? No, but uh, look, I'm coming to that point. I'm slowly leading up to that, if you don't mind. Because unless you understand this, the sensory responses, whether the sensory responses are broken up, you follow, or is there a res- the response of all the senses together? If I, if there is response of a particular sense, sensation. Then what takes place? 
You understand when, I, when there is only the reaction of a, of a scent hmm, through the nose, then all the other senses are in more or less in a balance. Right? Right, sir? Test it, test it out. So, I'm asking, when you smell a flower, is there total response of all the senses, not only smelling, not only the, the, the whole organism responding with its senses? I wonder if I'm making this clear. No, sir, no, I don't agree. <laughs> Yeah, Ben. He hears the noise of the train going by. Yes, that's a very good question. The, you, you all heard the train going by, right? Did you respond to that noise completely? You understand, sir? So that there is no resistance to the noise. There is no irritation from the noise. You are, you are totally with the noise. I don't know. Look at those mountains, which you have looked probably every day and every evening and morning, not only with your eyes, optically you see it, but can you see the... Is there a perception of that mountain with all your senses being? If there is, there is no centre from which you are being, from which you are looking. Test it out. You can't do it now, as you are, because you can do it if you, are, if you look at the tent or look at your friend or anybody. Look as though you are looking with all your being and your senses. Then you will see that you are looking at something for the first time. Not with jaded eyes and memory and so on. We'll come to that. So the question then from there arises, not necessarily from there, but for a long. Can thought be aware of itself? I don't think you understand this. Or are we entering into something very, very complex and unnecessary? You're all very silent. Can't we test it now by just the hearing? Come on. Yes, but I'm asking the next question, sir, which is, you're thinking now, aren't you? Hmm? When I ask you a question, the whole movement of thinking arises, right? Right? Obviously. Now, that I'm asking whether that thinking itself See itself thinking. No, it, it's not possible, right? We have always the impression that 
That's why. Okay. That's why it's a, you haven't you haven't probed into this matter very deeply. Forgive me for saying so, but I'm just asking. You see, I'm asking something which is: Can I? Can one live a life without having a single conflict? A single effort, without any form of control. Please listen to this, because we live with effort, we struggle, right? There is always achieving, moving, And so the, our life is lived in constant struggle, constant battle, constant contradiction. Right? I must do this, I must not do that, I must control myself. I, I, why, shouldn't I, why should I control myself? I'm new. That's old fashioned. I'll do what I want to do. All that is. A movement of violence, right? Right, sir. Now, I want, if one is inquiring, is it possible to live without any shadow of control? Which doesn't mean doing everything you want to do, which is too childish, because you can't. The permissiveness, now they are turning the other way around. <laughs> they see the danger of it, and so they don't allow permission, control. Now I'm asking, is it possible to live without any control? Probably you never asked this question of yourself. Now I'm asking you. Where there is control, there is conflict. Right? There is a battle going on, which expresses itself in many, many different ways, this battle – violence, suppression, neuroticism, and permissiveness – all that goes on. So I'm asking, Myself and you, whether I can live daily life without a shadow of control. To live that way, I have to find out who is the controller. You understand? Is the controller different from the control? And if they are both the same, there is no need for control. I wonder if you understand this. That is, sir, I am jealous. Because you have got everything and I have got nothing. And from that jealousy arises anger, hatred, envy, a sense of violence to be like, to have all that you have. And if I can't get it, I get bitter, angry, and all the rest of it follows. Right? So can I live 
without jealousy. Which means without comparison. Test it out, sir. Can you live your daily life without comparing at all? Of course, there is comparing when I choose this kind of trouser to the other. I am not talking about that. I am talking psychologically not to have any sense of measurement, which is comparison. If you have no measurement at all, will you decay? Will you become a vegetable, do nothing, you understand, stagnate? Or because you are comparing, because you are struggling, you think you are living. But if you don't struggle, it may be a totally different form of living. I wonder. Come on. No, not let it happen, sir. Look at it. You meet a very intelligent man, hmm? erudite, scholarly, you know, well educated, good brain, and all the rest of it. And you say, By Joe, I wish I like him. All our education is based on that. You must be as good as your brother, if not better. Right? Examinations are based on that. And so on, so on. So can you, having been through all that a process where you have compared, struggled, while and all the rest of it, can you say, I won't? I, I, I see the truth of the, the absurdity of living that way. I won't compare. I won't measure my own dullness, with me, my own state with somebody else. By comparing myself with somebody who is very clever, I say how terribly dull I am. Right? You understand? But if I don't compare with the man who is extraordinarily bright and intelligent, am I dull? Huh? Answer, am I dull? On the contrary. <laughs> so can you live without comparison? Without the example, so you find out that where there is control, there must be the controller who says, "I must control this reaction, or I mustn't do that." But. That has become a habit, doing that, so I must control, which means I have set a standard, right? The standard is the measurement according to which I have measured and said, this is right, and I must live according like that. So. Measurement implies control, and if you don't measure yourself and call yourself dull compared to somebody else who is bright, you are dull when you compare. But when there is no comparison whatsoever, you are, you are something else.
right. So let's move from me. Just a minute, sir, that noise. I can't I hear, sir. Think, or I feel that the momentum of the thinking process is so strong that I cannot just uh, set myself aside to it and say I won't think anymore. I, I don't understand. Uh, I can't hear, sir. Ah, the thinking momentum is so strong, <coughs> such a drive. The momentum of thinking is so strong that I cannot just set myself aside to it and say, I won't think anymore. I, I didn't so say that. P forgive me. What? Implied in your teaching, there is this idea of total transformation, a mutation of the mind. Now, this is supposed to be a radical change of consciousness itself. Now, I imagine this to take place as a sudden insight, a flash of understanding, uh, a conscious uh, experience of consciousness itself. Sir, it may I ask something? What are you trying to tell me? Well, I'm trying to tell you that I'm actually getting very bored by this constant repetition of these uh, ideas about look at this and, uh, sir, wait a minute, sir. Yes. If you are getting bored, just walk out. That's, well, I'm not really that bored yet. <laughs> what is that? I, still... I didn't hear. I still... What? I still have the hope that you might convey... Just a minute, sir. Just, just a minute, sir. Just a minute. I just a minute, sir. Did you hear what I said? I would you have something to say? If you are mildly bored. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Sir, what do you want? To, could you kindly tell me what you want to say in a few words, sir? Yes, you are waiting f for me to explain how transformation takes place. I have, it's very simple. Transformation takes place when there is no control. when there is no measurement, when there is no sense of me 
operating on things psychologically. That's all. And if, if that is not clear, we'll go into it. And if you say, I'm bored by the repetition of this, what you say over and over, I'm sorry. If you are bored, then walk out. If you are mildly bored, tolerate it. And if you are really want to understand it, give your attention to it. That's all. If you don't, it's all right. Yes, sir. Permissiveness is the reaction to control, obviously. We have been trained from childhood through certain period in history, Victorian it's called, that control, don't show your feelings, obey, follow, all that. Now we are to, in reaction to all that, say, out with all that nonsense, I'm going to do what I like. And the parents also feel they shouldn't control, or some psychologist is terrible to uh, control your children, they must do what they like. We've been through all that. So we are saying, control is totally unnecessary without having the other reaction, which is permissiveness, totally unnecessary when you understand the whole business of control. That's all. Can you hear something? She said, is that right thinking? She wants to know if not to live without control, is that right thinking? You follow it? This becomes so... <laughs> Look, sir, please, listen to something. I may be wrong, let's find out. Thought is measurement, right? Thought is m moving in a certain direction. No? So, any movement involves time. Right? From here to there and so on, both psychologically and physically. Time is measurement. Right? Which is the whole momentum of thought is measurement. What? No. Please, just a minute, you haven't... <laughs> now to begin again. So do, I, do we understand each other when we say thought in its momentum, in its moving, in its drive, is time? The past, Passing, going through the present, modifying itself, and the future. That is the momentum of time. That's the momentum of thought. And that is 
also the momentum of measurement. Psychologically, as well as physically. This is simple enough what... Right, sir? Now, I'm asking, one lives that way, one is constantly caught in the past, one is the past, and that past modifies itself all the time and moves forward. The past modifying itself, going to the future. This whole momentum is time, measurement. Right? That's all. So, why is it that we live in the past all the time? Why is it that we are not leaving the past – which doesn't mean you forget the past, you understand the whole nature of the past – and find out what it means – I'm not saying – try, experiment with it, test it – what it means to live completely now. Which means the momentum of the past is no longer opera operating. That is, put it differently if you are, want to go into it more, which is people have asked throughout the centuries whether time has a stop. Right? Not chronological time, not whether the sun can, can remain in perpetually in one place, but psychologically can time end. Don't you ask this question? Huh? Or you are all you don't even observe this momentum. Which is, put it differently, knowledge has become tremendously important. Right? Not only technologically, where you must have knowledge, but also knowledge as experience. More, more and more and more understanding. Right? So we worship knowledge. If you are I've said this hundred times, if you are bored by it, please tolerate it. Have patience. If you can't tolerate, just walk out. The speaker is interested in telling you this. He wants you to find out something different than constant repetition. Unless you do it, what is said becomes repetitive. It is not repetitive to the speaker. I would get bored much more than that gentleman if I repeated this to myself or at every talk. It is, I walk out. I wouldn't be sitting here. But as you inquire, you see much more, deeper and deeper, wider. Depth is not measurement. <laughs> I must be careful of that.
If one sees the truth of this day, how we live, that we are always functioning from the past, that our life is a, is a momentum of remembrances, a momentum of recording and acting, like a tape which is recording, our brain records and from that recording act, which is all the momentum of time. So one asks if you are interested, if you can if I can put it in ten different ways, which I have done for the last fifty years, is it possible for the brain to record what is absolutely necessary, which is technology, how to drive a car, this, that, the other thing, and psychologically, inwardly, not record a thing? When you, when you are hurt, not physically but psychologically, inwardly, why should it be recorded? Hmm? You understand my question? Why do, what's the necessity of being carrying on this hurt for years and years and years? What for? Why should you record it? If you can answer that one question and find out that it's possible not to record the hurt, then you have solved when you perhaps then the brain will only record that which is absolutely physiologically necessary. Nothing psychological, emotional etc. Right? Can this question be investigated without seeing if the total consciousness can be conscious of itself? Sir, I, if you don't mind, we will deal with this question of the whole consciousness, whether it can be aware of itself, when we understand this whole cycle of movement, of repetition. I can use the word repeat, hmm? but the word is not the feeling of repetition. I can't hear, sir. Don't we record in the first in order to avoid another hurt? We say the next time. Don't we record the hurt in order to avoid another hurt? Don't we protect ourselves from other hurts? Right? I have been hurt once. <coughs> And I don't want to be hurt again. So psychologically, I build a wall around myself so as not to be hurt anymore. Right, sir? Is that what you. Which means what? I isolate myself in order not to be hurt. Right? It's obvious. You have hurt me once, and you may hurt me again. Therefore, I, build, I withdraw, I build a wall of resistance, I isolate myself so that I won't be hurt. So from that isolation there is violence, obviously, fear. So why should I carry the first hurt? 
is it possible not to be hurt at all? The word innocence means a mind that is not hurt, that has never been hurt. Hmm? Not the symbol of a lamb and all that kind of stuff, but actually a mind that has never been damaged. When it is damaged, it is hurt. Right? Now, is it possible to totally put it away, avoid being hurt? Which doesn't mean you become brutal or resist on it. Do you want to find out? Whether it's possible not to be hurt at all, without becoming callous, indifferent, uh, snooty, and all the rest of it. Hmm? I can't hear. Which I, 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 have we time to go into this? Do you want to go into this now? Eighteen minutes to twelve. What? May I? Will you give me two minutes so I can finish this? If you don't want to listen, don't listen. You understand? You are free to go. One has been hurt in childhood by the, by the parents, by other boys and girls. One is hurt in school, college, university. One is hurt. Right? Right? You are good. Now, that is, now I'm. Fifty, when he's fifty, that's past. The hurt is behind. And you're asking, can that hurt, ancient, old, the past, in the past, can that be totally wiped away? Right? That's the question. Right, sir? Not through analysis, right? Did I go into that? That is, if you are here for the first time, let me briefly say it. The analyzer thinks he's different from the analyzed, right? The analyzer is not hurt, but the analyzed is hurt. So the analyzer who thinks he is not hurt, who thinks he is separate, is going to examine the hurt. Right? But the analyzer is the hurt too. Right? So analysis has very little meaning in freeing the mind from the from hurt. When one sees the analyzer is the analyzed. I must go into Arab, please. So there is no analysis. Why am I hurt? Why am I keeping the hurts? Why do you keep your hurts? 
is part of you, right? Perhaps if you get rid of the hurt, you might get rid of yourself. So the question then is, how, am, how is that hurt to be totally dissolved, not leaving a single scratch? Then I have to go into the question, what is hurt? Who is hurt? Right? The image that I have about myself is hurt. Right? I think I'm a marvelous man. You come along, tell me, don't be silly. That hurts me because I have an image about myself as being marvelous, clever, intelligent, bright, and all the rest of that rubbish. And you come along and say, For oh, goodness sake, what an ass you are! The image which I have created about myself is hurt. Right? Whether that hurt is in the past or in the present. Obvious. Then the question arises, is it possible not to have an image about oneself at all? Because as long as there is an image about myself, somebody is going to tread on it. So I have to find out why, I have not find out why the brain, the mind, has created this image about itself. Has it created because in that image there is security. In that image there is safety. If there is no image, what am I? Therefore I am frightened, I cling to my image. And you are going to tread on it, politely, kindly, tolerantly, you are going to put your foot on it, and I get hurt. So I have to find out whether there is a possibility of living without a single image, the image being my conclusions, my opinions, my aggressiveness, my etc., etc., the me, the image. If I have no image, you can't tread on it. If I have no image at all now, the past is hurt is not. You understand, sir? Right? Now may I go? Ah. No, probably little. I, we cannot. I don't know the the little children. Can you repeat the question? Huh? Can you repeat the question? The question was: As a child, one is hurt, right? Why? Your baby, your son, your girl. When she's about four or five, why is she hurt? All right, she's a she loves the teddy bear. <laughs> Let's take her to bed with it. Loves it, kisses it, hugs it, holds it all day long. You come along and pull it away. Some some other child pulls it away, begins to cry, right? taken away something which was mine, begins the whole cycle. Is that enough for this morning? <laughs>